in many, in many ways, 2023 was an inflection point for the semiconductor industry. The Synopsys conducted surveys of Keystone companies and nearly 40% of companies surveyed indicated that they are now exploring and adopting multi-dial systems. That's a significant change and increase from past years. Several years ago, Art Dijus, the founder and chairman of Synopsys, talked about the era of Sysmor, and many of you may have heard him speak. So this denotes the coming together of systemic complexity and the ambition of Moore's law. Today, we are in the era of Sysmor, and right in the, in the, at the core, as an, as an enabler, are multi-die multi systems. Last year, the MIT Technology Review published a report in partnership with Synopsys. By the way, there is a wealth of information in this report. I encourage you to download this report from the synopsys.com website when you get a chance. And in this report, Sasin Ghazi, the CEO of Synopsys, had a quote. And in this quote, there were two key messages. One is innovation across the technology stack. And the second is collaboration. Both of these are essential and important for the multi-die industry. And I'll talk about that in more detail. So if you look at the progression of designs and design complexity, starting with designing with schematics, and some of you here may remember those days. Maybe you do not want to admit, admit it. The first inflection point was the introduction of HDL, hardware description languages. This allowed designing larger chips faster with better performance PPA, better performance power and area. It opened up the pathways of synthesis, test, verification, automatic place and route. You all are familiar with that. I led the synthesis franchise synopsis for over 12 years. And during that time, we introduced this concept of designware IPs. So these are parametrizable arithmetic units like multipliers and ALUs. For example, in synthesis, you can pick the architecture. You can pick a half adder, a full adder, or a carry loop adder. You can pick a boost multiplier. And in many ways, this was a window into the possibilities of IP, which leads us to the next inflection point, which is designing with IPs, which further enabled addition of large number of fun functionality on a single chip, and accomplishing this in reasonable time to results, with superior quality of results and in a reliable and predictable manner. A logical progression, the next step in this logical progression is the multi-die system. And there are many drivers for this. So, and some of the earlier speakers alluded to this, that the multi-die ecosystem enables even small companies with small pocketbooks to develop complex systems where they can focus on their own competitive advantage, their differentiated value. I'm not sure if folks at the back can read the quote at the bottom. This is a quote from Raja Koduri of Intel, where he says that there's a thousand X more compute demand for AI by 2025. And you heard the thousand X number in previous presentations as well. So that's of course a key driver, but there are other drivers. And again, the previous speakers have spoken to them. So to, just to summarize what they mentioned, disaggregation, modularity, provides additional flexibility and configurability. It allows the end user or the architect to trade off cost and performance metrics. You can mix and, max, mix and match dies. You can choose to have a die in, a, in an older node and save costs. During the pandemic time, there was this concern about supply chain. And during the time, there was a lot of conversation about heterogeneous integration, about multi dies and chiplets, because that enabled architects to, in, when they were not getting enough seats at the table in foundry houses, when they were hitting capacity limits, it enabled the architects to pivot and design some of their dies with the more advanced nodes and also using onshore fabs. There are of course advantages of quality of results, better thermal and electrical performance. 
predictability, lower the risk, better time to results, better yield. In 2023, Gartner released a forecast and they estimated that the 3DIC market is expected to exceed $55 billion with a CAGR over 13% in the next five years. And there are other forecasts as well, which had extremely bullish trends with high double-digit CAGR in, for the chiplet industry. If you look at the data, the data seems to defend these forecasts. And certainly there is a lot of momentum behind it. The table on the left shows the number of design starts by year. And the purple portion is the number of design starts with chiplets, or multi-die design starts. It's projected that in three to four years, by 2027, over half of the design starts will have chiplets. So that's a significant number, and it's very exciting. The data on the right from Synopsys it looked at design starts in 2023, and nearly 50% of the design starts in the IRS server and AI market. Again, not a surprise. There's also healthy participation from other segments. About a quarter of the design starts is from networking and automotive combined. And there are, there's also participation in edge servers, consumers, storage, etc. And those who attended the presentation from you earlier in the morning, there was an interesting data that they shared, which I'm presenting here again. And this data shows the number of the volume of units, the number of units produced by year and divided into different segments. It's not a surprise that high-performance computing, servers, AIs, as well as PCs, are beachheads for multi-die design and chiplets usage. The ASPs in these sectors are one to three orders of magnitude higher than ASPs, say, in the consumer SOC space. However, as the demand for adding more functions onto a chip keeps expanding in the consumer space, it's inevitable that there will be a strong march to chiplets in the consumer SOCs. And that's exciting because if you look at the volumes in the consumer systems, it's orders of magnitude more than the volume of units produced in the other sectors. So that promises a very significant TAM for chiplets. Now, all of this is made possible thanks to investments and advancements in many key areas, and I'll touch upon a few of them, starting with a comprehensive solution for heterogeneous integration across the full technology stack. And I'm talking about from architecture all the way to implementation, manufacturing, test. At the architecture level, there are many choices to be made. Disaggregation choices, packaging choices, flow planning, and when you talk about 3D, how do you stack the dice? And these choices have a profound impact on the metrics we care about. Thermal performance, electrical performance, cost, reliability, yield. And so these choices cannot be made in isolation. And in the previous keynote, Subi talked about co-optimization. And that's a, an important theme for multi-die systems and large complex systems. Chip design and package design cannot be thought of in isolation. So there is, there is this notion of co-design and co-optimization that becomes important. And to facilitate that, there is a, there is a need for systemic analysis, multi-physics. We're talking about not just looking at timing, but looking at thermal and power, EMIR, all at the same time. And then there are the dimensions of mechanical reliability and warpage. There is talk about ESD being an important factor as well. So, so it's important to have these, these analysis capabilities, system level analysis capabilities available throughout the technology stack. Verification is a big problem, system level verification, where the goal is to have very high coverage without a massive pattern explosion, which can be prohibitive in terms of time to results or to verify in a timely manner. Use of silicon proven IP and IP chiplets. And then and last but not the least, life cycle management. Monitor, test, and repair. The ability to debug problems in a large complex system quickly. And even better, if we are able to detect problems before they happen and fix them or repair them, perhaps in the field, that's a tremendous value because the cost of failure is very high. So these capabilities exist today. 
and Synopsys is continuing to invest in the, in the space. Another key enabler is advanced packaging, and the previous speakers talked about this. Organic substrates and wafer level packaging are relatively low cost and have had a decent adoption across different sectors. Now, silicon interposers and hybrid bonding offer higher interconnect density. Now, high interconnect density is important and it enables more applications to benefit from the multi die systems. There is continuous advancements and investments in the packaging industry and packaging technology. In parallel, there is a lot of investment by foundries to grow the size of the dyes that is manufacturable. Recently, TSMC announced a plan to grow their supercarrier into poser size using or leveraging their new coas L technology with the ambition of manufacturing or fabricating a dye six times the reticle size limit, six times. So that's very exciting and, and exciting and bodes well for the multi-dye industry. So fan-out wafer level package has seen a lot of adoption, particularly in the mobile and wireless space, base, uh, wireless basebands, for example, and is making its way to the automotive and medical sectors. Now the linear interconnect density of the fan-out wafer level package makes it possible for disaggregation. It's lot, the interconnect density is a lot higher than organic substrates, and the relative cost of the packaging compared to, say, hybrid bonding uh, makes it attractive as well. It has good electrical performance, thermal properties, as well as the package size itself is almost the size of the die size, which is, of course, an important property that makes it attractive. On the right-hand side is an example shared by DECA at the 2022 SNUG event, where they took a monolithic S SOC and broke it up, disaggregated it into 12 dyes and connected them with five redistribution layers as shown at the bottom here. And this connection was possible because of fan out wafer level packaging. The bond pad pitch was less than 20 microns, line and space was less than two microns, and that provided the wires per millimeter or the interconnect density needed to make this happen. And as a result, we have a multi-die system with all the benefits that come with it, a lower cost system with higher yield than a monolithic SOC. As the design complexity grows, the opportunity for AI to improve productivity and TTR, time to result, significantly is, is, is huge. And some previous talk speakers have spoken about this opportunity as well. I think there are several sessions that address this as well. So the opportunity is in many different segments. There is a collaborative segment where it can help with answering questions, perhaps even product level questions. How do I do this? Analyzing your workflows. Am I doing the right thing? Is there a better way of doing things? To taking it to the next level of sophistication of creating these workflows, the flows, uh, for example, for design implementation, perhaps even RTL generation, assertion checks generation, and then further sophistication of exploring the design space, which is pretty massive for these large complex designs. And so doing these design space optimization, PPA optimization, quality result optimization. And then certain segments like verification, where the system level verification to achieve a very high level of fault coverage can be prohibitive in terms of runtime. So there is an opportunity with for AI to help maximize the coverage while minimizing, for example, the pattern count. And there are several such examples, and some of these solutions exist today, and this is another space where Synopsys continues to invest heavily. The importance of ecosystem cannot be underestimated. Synopsys is deeply engaged with many stakeholders and keystone companies with the objective of developing interoperability standards, developing solutions and methodologies, investing in research and development, and partnering with third-party solutions, best-in-class solutions, to ensure that we have the best solution, the most efficient solution available for our end customers, end-to-end -end whole technology stack. A shiny example of the ecosystem is the UCIE, or Universal Chiplet Interconnect Express, that you all are familiar with. A group of member companies got together and made this happen. The UCIE is a foundational standard, it's a seminal standard, which enables interconnecting dyes. These dyes could be from different vendors, 
They could be from different technology nodes. It has good performance latency protocols. It has support for the full protocol stack. It's comprehensive and future-proof, but more work needs to be done. Intel Foundry, TSMC, and Synopsys joined together, collaborated, and developed the first test chip for UCIE, codenamed Pipe Creek. This quote below from Pat Gelsinger, Intel CEO, he gave this quote at the Intel Innovation last year. He said, the first test chip for UCIE and the beginning of the chiplet era. So whenever I see this quote, I feel a tingling. It reminds me of this famous quote from Neil Armstrong. The first step on the moon, one giant leap for mankind. It feels that way, doesn't it? I'm pumped up, I'm charged up. Last year at the TSMC Open Innovation Platform, OIP, the TSMC and Synopsys announced the results of a collaboration where two dyes communicated, communicated with each other using high-speed UCIE-based interface IPs and GPIOs as well, general purpose IO interface IPs as well. But the key objective is to showcase the power and importance of MTR IPs or monitor test and repair IPs. Like I explained earlier, for a large system, MTRs monitor test and repair becomes very important. And this project leveraged TSMC's CoWAS or chip on wafer on substrate interposer technology. Another example is Develop is this example where a multi-die system was developed and it exercised the full technology stack. And this was a collaboration with Alchip. Alchip is one of the large ASIC vendors. They're also a provider of advanced technology, uh, packaging technology solutions. And in this project or exercise, production proven 2.5D packaging technology was used from Alchip along with the full EDA stack and silicon proven IP from Synopsys. And this this project exercised a whole technology stack from architecture and flow plan exploration to multi-physics thermal power analysis to using IP with 3D fabric technology rules, analyzing the package choices, IO bumping, hybrid, bo hybrid bond, uh, bonding analysis, guidelines for CP or signal integrity, power integrity, and so on. The objective was to gre grease the ramp for easy adoption for our customers to, to ease their shift to chiplets and multi-die. So where are we today with multi-die systems? The usage today is driven by a large measure by data centers. All of you are aware of that. But there is a shift towards chiplets in other segments as well. Other speakers talked about automotive. The 2.5D chiplet-based approach is trending in the automotive sector. And in the mobile sector where form factor is important, 3D chiplet-based designs are trending. There are other sectors where cost is important. For example, how we see the user organic interposers. UCIE was a seminal standard. More work needs to be done. For example, expanding this protocol or the standard to stacking. Standard languages and standardization for capturing rules, for testing, test methodologies are important among others. So, that, so standardization remains an important area that we need some progress on. Productivity through AI, I talked about that. There are lots of opportunities, including full automation three, in the 3D space, design space optimization, and in the 3D multi-die systems itself, a generalized solution for logic on logic stacking, as well as adoption of full end-to-end -end automation. Now, if you, see, if you take a note or take a pause to see what we have today, there is a significant demand for large, complex designs. You hear about silicon everywhere, silicon to software. Customers building their own silicon for different solutions. All of this is driving the growth of the semiconductor industry. So the demand is available. And, and if you look at the benefits of multi-die systems, they cater to this demand very well low cost, high yield, time to results, mix and match, configurability, flexibility of the dies, modularity, etc. If you look at the enablers in terms of end-to-end -end technology stack, pack, advanced packaging, ecosystem, AI, etc., that's available today. Of course, a lot more work, a lot more investment is needed. 
it, it seems that now is a time where we will see a significant growth in the usage of the chiplets, of chiplets and multi dies. And let me leave you with this note that the more designs that use chiplets, this in turn will have a positive feedback cycle, which will induce more investment, more research, more advancements in this whole ecosystem of chiplets and multi dies, which in turn will fuel more usage. And it seems to me that we are at this point today, this inflection point today. So the time is now, let's work together to make it happen.